molten metal flowing off the substance held in the jaws of this backhoe. Now, let's listen to John Gross, lead engineer of NIST, tell us about the molten metal from his perspective. I'm curious about uh, the, uh, the pool of molten steel that was found in the bottom of the, of the tower. Um, I, I am too. And <laughs> Please tell me about it. Have you, have you seen it? Well, I, no, not personally, but eyewitnesses there found huge poles of molten steel beneath the towers. And uh, scientists, some scientists don't think that the uh, collapse of the building could have melt, melted all that steel. And uh, uh, professor, physics professor analyzed some of the steel and uh, Stephen Jones, and he found evidence of, uh, of thermate residue, mm -hmm. which would explain how the buildings collapsed by means of pre-planted explosives. So have you analyzed the, uh, the steel for uh, any of those residues? Um, first of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, no eyewitness who has said so, nobody who's produced it, Underground fires, ignited by burning jet fuel, smoldered for months, fed by molten steel and buried carpeting, office furniture, wood paneling, and paper. You see how this debris is still smoking? That's when the fire is going to still burn it. Eight weeks later, we still got fires burning. So, I mean, these things are burning. At one point, I think they were about 2,800 degrees. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel Molten line. steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like lava. Like, like, like lava. lava. From a volcano. Actually, melted beams where it was molten steel that was being dug out. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of a wall. It's this fused element of of steel, mo molten steel, and concrete, and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. These cooled meteorites are not aluminum because aluminum doesn't rust. It's not a melted airplane. What does the gentleman in charge of the cleanup at World Trade Center, Ground Zero, have to say about the molten metal? Mark Loiseau, the president of Controlled Demolition Incorporated, told the American Free Press that in the basements of the World Trade Center, where 47 central support columns connected to the bedrock, hot spots of literally molten steel were discovered more than a month after September 11th. These incredibly hot areas were found at the bottoms of the elevator shafts, down seven basement levels. The molten steel was found three, four, and five weeks later when the rubble was being removed. He said that molten steel was also found at World Trade Center 7. And they pulled out the big block of concrete, and there was a, like a little river of steel uh, flowing. Many witnesses, firemen, and lots of people described the flowing molten metal, iron or steel, at extremely hot temperatures. And John Gross categorically denied their observations, so that because their observations don't fit his preconceived notion, he not only ignored evidence, he denied evidence. There were reports of uh, molten steel having been seen in the, uh, in the rubble pile of all three buildings. And uh, I knew that jet fuel, uh, which is essentially kerosene, uh, is not uh, capable of melting steel nor iron. Um, kerosene or jet fuel uh, burns uh, at less than 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. And molten steel needs at least uh, 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in order to uh, melt. There were sections of them that clearly showed melting. They had uh, sections that were thinned away, and there were actually holes through them. And some of the ends were just melted away or even possibly evaporated away. In an office fire, you cannot generate enough heat to melt steel. And yet we have evidence of molten iron in the microspheres, in the rubble pile, and the metal pouring out of the side of the tower. I worked as a uh, 
uh, in the project engineering department of the casting plant uh, of Elcan, the Aluminum Company of Canada, one of the largest aluminum smelters on the planet at the time. And uh, in that smelter, we turned aluminum oxide into aluminum, molten aluminum. Molten aluminum is silver. It's not yellow, it's silver. It looks like mercury. The yellow molten metal that I saw pouring out of the South Tower is indicative of molten iron. NIST claimed that the molten metal was aluminum. I mean, it doesn't look at all like molten aluminum. It looks like iron. You cannot get a flame hot enough to start the metal to molten, make it molten in the first place so that this other process takes off. I don't know of any mechanism for that. The only way that's known that a carbonaceous material can cause steel or iron oxide to, to be, turn into a molten metal is in a blast furnace. Yeah, and that's very different than what we had. Molten metal in the basements of all three buildings all scientists now reasonably agree that the fires were not sufficiently hot to melt the steel. So what is this molten metal? It's a direct evidence for the use of thermite. An incendiary used by the military, thermite is a compound of iron oxide and aluminum, which when ignited sustains an extreme heat reaction, creating molten iron. In just two seconds, Thermite can reach temperatures over 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, quite enough to liquefy steel. We know that open air fires cannot burn hot enough to melt steel, but metal had melted at the base of the towers. So thermite, if it was uh, present at the World Trade Center and created this molten metal that uh, so many witnesses and uh, photographic evidence shows, would also explain potentially the fact that the fires could not be put out at ground zero. The fires lasted for quite a while, but um, most importantly, they were um, deep within the pile where people would expect that it, the environment was oxygen starved. And uh, thermite could explain this because it has its own oxidant within. It's actually the uh, metallic oxide that provides the oxidant to allow the uh, incendiary thermite reaction to occur, even underwater. An incendiary is something which can be used to destroy something by the means of heat, while an explosive is something which reacts, acts with pressure. It knocks things apart. In the case of thermite cutting charges, you would have heard far less noise since they are worked by uh, thermal heating, melting of the steel, rather than an explosive cutting as in RDX charges. Older flights had detected uh, with infrared camera 1400 degree Fahrenheit hotspots on the surface uh, of ground zero. And uh, that being there for a week, um, you know, indicates that there was something very hot going on below the surface. But, you know, these underground fires were just uh, like the fires of hell. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know, it was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? You're gonna hold, we're gonna hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see what he's doing. There were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit below the ground. And all of a sudden, he comes out of this little tunnel, screaming, wait till you see what I found. And he pulls in ministers and uh, officials, and there this cross is fully extended, melted together with the intense heat. The two beams were never initially part of the same structure. Heat literally melted them together. 
and the piece of metal that's draped over was molten metal that had literally fallen over one of the arms. So Jonathan Barnett's study, uh, which I thought was very well done and, and quite extensive, is all documented by FEMA in Appendix C in their, in their BPAT report that was May of 2002. Unfortunately, it was never used in the NIST report. And I'd like to know why NIST excluded the evidence of melting steel. Well, why is this not included? Why is this forensic evidence not being included in the report? Um, I know of absolutely nobody, and no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. What is the problem here? And we, <laughs> we have plenty of eyewitnesses who have produced it. Somebody's lying. I'm going to leave it up to you to make your own conclusions. The last fire was not even extinguished for three months after 9-11. Tom Manley says you couldn't even begin to imagine how much water was pumped in there. It was like you were creating a giant lake. Well, thermite contains its own source of oxygen. It burns just as well under water.